Welcome back to the Tool Crib. Well, I was finally able to get my hands on the latest iteration of Leatherman's multi-tool. This is the Leatherman Garage number no. five or the 40th anniversary edition. Now, unfortunately, I set just like a lot of people as soon as the drop came, uh, trying to get checked out, just could not get it done. Everything froze on me. And so I was forced to go into the aftermarket. So I paid a pretty penny for this one. But I'm glad that I did because this multi-tool has a lot of features to it that not just the the major things that you've seen on some from some other reviews but it has some more nuanced things that you might not necessarily catch unless you're holding it or using this multi-tool or take a little closer look at it that i think this is above and beyond it is leaps and bounds above what the original free p4 was and i'm starting slowly but surely to come around on this particular frame now that's not to say that i think that uh, any iteration of a free series multi-tool could ever replace the my edc which is the leatherman surge simply because of the industry that i work in when you're working around fine metal dust that comes off grinding disc that when you're working with steel it's just going to attract to those magnets and it just does not make for a very good combination. Now, that being said, you can just use an air compressor or uh, you know one of those electronic uh, dusting cans, blow it out of there, and go on about life. It's just the it's it's a it's a nuisance to me, and so I can't ever really see myself going full fledged into the free series. But I'm starting to have a better understanding of why it appeals to so many people. So let's get into the Leatherman. Uh, 40th anniversary edition. We'll talk about some of the major changes to it and then some of those more nuanced changes as well. So before we get into the tool set of this particular multi-tool, I want to highlight the sheath that they send along with this one. This is a heritage sheath. This is made in the USA product, a nice leather sheath. And I actually use a uh, heritage sheath with my surge sometimes. The only thing that I don't like about the heritage sheaths is that they don't have uh, any ability to carry onboard accessories like your bit extender or, or uh, extra bits, if you will. But this sheath works and fits very well with this multi-tool. Of course, if I was gonna use this full time, then I would probably eliminate the pocket clip altogether and make it for a little bit better fit. So the leather sheath that comes with it, very nice addition. And most of these garage releases, they've been sending along very nice sheaths to, to house these particular multi-tools. Well, let's get into the tool set. So the first thing we wanna talk about with the tool set is the biggest and best addition to this multi-tool and that is the MagnaCut steel blade. Now this is a very much improved knife blade over the original Free P4 and Leatherman has used in the past for the majority of their multi-tools a 420HC and while they do a very good heat treat on their 420HC uh, this is just above and beyond uh, that knife steel. So this is going to have a lot better edge retention, uh, its hardness, its rust resistance, just an overall better package. And this is a very similar design uh, to what they had with the original Free P4. It's a little little bit changed, uh, but and I think this is a much better or much more attractive looking blade as well. And the major difference to this one, and something that I'm actually starting to covet on my for my Leatherman Surge now is the addition of that thumb stud. Uh, it just makes for a very much more premium feel to this multi-tool, and it is a great addition. I hope we start seeing these come out in other multi-tools as well, because that is a fantastic thing to do with this multi-tool. It just makes the usability of the knife so much smoother. You don't have your thumb digging into the thumb slot. Uh, and while I've never really had a problem opening the knife blades on a Leatherman multi-tool, uh, it just gives that more premium feel. And it's it, it's really nice. You really, I mean, if you work with, you know, use high quality knives, then you know what I'm talking about. But it's just a, it's a very nice thing that they've added to this particular multi-tool. So now let's get into the tool set. And we're going to try to hit some of these little more nuanced things as we go. Uh, first thing I want to talk about is the interior tools here. Now you notice, before we get into those tools, how I was able to flip that open and it kind of holds in place. Now I'm going to bring in the free P4 here to highlight the difference here. So on the free P4, uh, and the, the, the difference here is that this tool was just tightened up a lot more out of the factory than what the original free P4, P2 were. You see how if I flip those up, the magnet actually has enough strength because this is so loose that as I'm trying to fan those out, sometimes they'll try to drop down on me before I can get them out. I really got to get them pulled over here far. And even that, sometimes they don't always 
hold before I get a chance to fan them out. Another thing with this tool is the fact that how the tool set is laid out. You'll notice this one on the P4 goes from short to long, short, long. And so it doesn't fan out quite as easily. Where on this one, it goes from long to short all the way from front to back and it makes it much more easy to fan those tools out. It's a little thing, but it's it makes a difference. You wouldn't think so, but it makes a big difference in usability or user experience. Now, the first tool, uh, on the center here is gonna be the can opener. This is standard to the free series of tools, whether that be in the P2, P4, the T series or the K series tools. Uh, I don't mind that that's on there because frankly, my personal use, I've used a can opener on a multi-tool a lot more than one might think. Uh, the next tool is gonna to be a redesign. So I'm gonna pull the one out on the P4 here as well to show you the difference between this one and that's on this side. So originally this was your screwdriver works as a pry tool. The cut edge here works as a package opener. And the addition to this one is it has all of those features. So it's four combination, a screwdriver, quarter inch screwdriver, pry tool, package opener, and then they redesign it to add in the bottle cap lifter over here. Now, if you need a bottle cap lifter, uh, you know, this is one of those tools that they add in every multi-tool regardless. I do not mind it in the configuration that it is now and with this one because it doesn't take away from the usability of the other features of this tool. It's kind of a hidden gem in there, if you will. It's just a little extra functionality uh, that doesn't really uh, take away from the usability of the rest of the implement. So very nicely done, Leatherman. And then the last one over here is standard for the free P2, P4. I was hoping this one would change. Uh, this one has the micro driver front tip to it, and this is your all. Now, I have used this in the free P4 when it came out. I tried it. It does work as an all, will dig into wood quite well, plastics. Uh, not quite as good as a sharpened all is going to, like on a rebar or a surge or super tool, uh, but it does work. It's just not quite. I just wish they would get eliminate this little screwdriver. Now, that being said, I have found uses in my Leatherman Surge for this little smaller onboard solid state screwdriver on my multi-tool that you just can't get out of the bit exchanger. So I don't mind that that screwdriver is on there, but I would prefer that they, they integrate it into the, uh, much like Victorinox does, if they would integrate it in, into the can opener at the front tip instead and leave this as a sharpened pointed all. I think it would work much better. Next tool is gonna to be your saw blade. Saw blade on the free series of tools works incredibly well. It's very well done like all Leatherman saws, uh, tapered on the back to eliminate jamming within the curve. Really well done saw. It's just the only thing that, this one got outperformed, well actually the one on the P4 got outperformed by the Wave, simply because the Wave has just a longer saw. That's just the uh, nature of how the tool is designed. But as far as effectiveness, this will get through tr pretty much anything you wanna put it uh, to cut on, whether that be woods or plastics or other materials as well. Then on the other side, this is a great addition. We're gonna pull the file out on the P4. So this is the new file. Now. What you sacrifice here is that you don't get, oops, you don't get the serrated blade. To some, that may be uh, maybe something that you need more than a file. Some I've heard a lot of people say, well, I never use a file. And then I've heard other people say, well, I never use a saw. And then you get others that say, well, I never use a serrated blade. So it's hard to make a tool set that is going to, to work for everyone. But beside the point. I like the addition of this file because the original file was terrible, just awful. Uh, first of all, it wasn't diamond coated. Secondly, the length on it was just, it's just a little stubby thing that you can hardly get anything done with. And it didn't have a diamond coated file. It just has the cross cut file and the single cut file, which I will say work well if you can get them, you know, if you file on something very, very close, uh, it works well, but it's just too short to be useful with this one. They have added a more full length file with the diamond coated finish, which I very much use and appreciate, as well as the standard edge file that you'll get on those files and the cross cut on the other side. So this is a fantastic addition to this multi-tool. The next two tools, uh, one I could do without, uh, 
the we first saw this micro driver holder in the original Leatherman garage, which was the Leatherman Mr. Crunch. Now it's redesigned and I will say that it holds that bit in there extremely well. So if you like that little eyeglass screwdriver, uh, you appreciate it in this tool. I just have always thought that they could integrate this driver into a, a way to be used with this tool. Or in fact, they could redesign this so that it would accept both. So you could pull this one out uh, whenever you need to use this, you pull it out of a bit kit or something and be able to use it in the same exchanger in one way, shape or form. Uh, something I always thought that they could do. But then again, it's a nice tool to have if you use that tool uh, often. The next tool is something that should have been on the free P4 from the very get go. And that is the bit exchanger. So originally the free P4 came with these two screwdrivers. We had the regular combination tool that we highlighted earlier, and then you had this more flattened Phillips driver, which also integrated the bottle cap lifter. Always, always felt cheap to me. It's one of the reasons I could not stand the free P4. It was like a, a high dollar wingman, if you will. Now I will say something about this bit exchanger is that this redesign has this bit sitting a lot higher in the exchanger. So you'll notice that it sits kind of crooked and that's not optical illusion. That actually is how it sits because the pressure of that spring is pushing that against the frame. And because this doesn't seat as far into the frame, that bit will tend to twist a little bit. Now, I don't think that's gonna be a problem because when you're using the screwdriver, you're putting down force, it straightens itself back out and you're able to use it in that fashion. Uh, I wanna highlight this against, this is a second generation wave. And when we pull that out, we see how deep that driver actually sets in here. So when it sets down, it sets down a lot more solid. So not saying that it doesn't have any movement, but it's a lot less than what you're gonna get out of the garage number five. You see how much play you have within that. So I wish that they would have more of this style of, of uh, exchanger, but they had to redesign this in order for it to work in this tool. So I'm not gonna complain about it per se, but I think they could tweak that a little bit if they wanted to. Uh, here's a little nuance thing that you don't necessarily catch unless you're looking for it. And that is this little bent piece. And what that's designed to do is it has that little bent front there that keeps that bit in place in its closed position. So you don't run the risk of losing that bit, whether you're using it with a pocket clip in your pocket or in a sheath, that bit's gonna stay in place. And so one of those things that you may not catch right off the start, but it is a, it just goes to show that Leatherman is really starting to pay attention, especially on this particular frame, that because they've really invested a lot in the free frame. Uh, that they're really starting to refine this tool. And it is rumored that the Leatherman Arc upcoming in October, which Leatherman has already announced, is going to have a very, very similar tool set to this particular multi-tool. So if that holds true, then I look to see that same kind of design in that multi-tool as well. And then the last of the interior tools is going to be the scissors. Uh, Scissors on the free series of tools are really well built. They're not quite on par with the Surge. Uh, and mostly that's due to the geometry of the blade, how it has that ramp up. Uh, when you're cutting on something and trying to make long cuts, it tends to bump up against there. And so with the Surge, it's more flattened. And I'll go ahead and pull my Surge out and so I can show you that. But with the Surge, you'll see that the frame or the handle here is in line with the cut edge of the lower jaw there. And so when you're cutting through something long, it just kind of slips on through there. It's a lot easier to cut long, longer lengths on, on certain materials. That ramp up there kind of hinders you a little bit. So I would like to see them redesign the P series or the free series scissors a little bit. I think they could make it a lot better in my opinion. And then uh, before we get into the pliers, this is something that was on the original Free P4, something that I highlighted in my original review of the Free P4, that they added this uh, pummeling or hammering surface. Uh, they've always had this in the Free Series. It's not something new. It's just that the reason I'm bringing it up is because Leatherman, for the first time, is actually acknowledging that that is a hammer surface. Now, granted, it's not the most comfortable to use for long periods of time, but it's nice to know that it is there so that you can use your multi-tool as a striking tool as well. Uh, for whatever reason, they're finally starting to acknowledge that. I'm glad that they are because it's always been there. 
Now, if we get into the pliers, this is, these are really nice. I gotta say, these are really, really nice. The spring-loaded pliers on here, and I'm not a spring-loaded plier type guy. Uh, I was always fine with the regular pliers, but I gotta tell you, the tension on here is set perfect. Uh, these are really a joy to use. They're really comfortable. Uh, it's so much so that I hope we start seeing these in other multi-tools, I gotta tell you. If they hold up strength-wise compared to regular pliers, this is something that Leatherman should consider adding across the board. I know it's gonna increase the price of their multi-tools across the line. Maybe they can make a cheaper version without the spring load and one with the spring load. And I think you're gonna find more people are gonna to gravitate towards the spring load if they have it uh, or have the option. Uh, this is really great pliers, really, really great pliers. So you get your needle nose, regular pliers, replaceable hard wire and wire cutters, and your uh, crimper that's on the back of the jaws as well. This one also has removable or uh, you, you can service these jaws because it has uh, this nut and bolt combination that can actually be taken apart. So you can take the two halves apart to do maintenance on it, clean it, uh, lubricate it, whatever you need to do. Or if you break a jaw, I think from Leatherman's perspective for warranty issues, they're not having to replace the whole thing. They can just replace a single half, might make it a little bit cheaper. And you notice these are stamped as made in the USA. So that is a huge, huge plus. And honestly, Leatherman has really got to start setting themselves apart from their competition because you got more and more influx of competitors coming in that are really just stealing Leatherman's designs with the Wave Surge. There's so many different clones out there now. Uh, Crunch is not exempt from that. And Leatherman has really got to set itself apart. And maybe that's why they have invested so much in the Free Series because this is new patented stuff. You know, it's only been out a few years. So it's not something that the competitors are gonna be able to copy immediately. And, and, you know, I've been pretty harsh on Leatherman for the free series, but I'm actually starting to come around a little bit on it because I see the usefulness for the average user, uh, though it's never really going to replace my Leatherman surge for my industry because if you work around metal dust, metal shavings, stuff like that, it's just not that it's detrimental, but it's just such a nuisance to have to clean it out of those tools because the magnets will attract metal dust like nobody's business. Uh, I tried it with the P4. I carried it for a week, and after a week, it was so clogged up. It was just, it was just awful. But it all depends on the industry you're working in, and most people are not going to have that problem. And for that reason, again, I'm starting to come around a little bit on the free series of tools. Now, uh, I don't know if I touched on this, but we talked about the tools here being tighter, but that's also true of the pliers as well. So on the free series of tools, when you open them up, you can kind of ballet song them out because the handles run so loose on these tools. So as soon as you open them up, you notice the handle just flops back and forth and you can flip that around and open it up. And that's one thing that a lot of people like about that tool. With this one, it's set quite a bit tighter. So when you open this up, you, can, you don't have that free movement like you do in the free series of tools because this pivot is tightened up with quite a bit more tension than what the original was. I actually prefer this this way. Uh, I just think it makes for a tighter tool. And the reason, I'm gonna show you the reason. While you have that free movement in the free series, free P2, P4, what you also get, because this is a looser joint, is you get a lot of handle play. So you see, I can move that handle back and forth. It just, it has such a cheap feel to it. Uh, it's one of the things I really hated about the free series of tools when they came out. Now, not to say that it eliminates it, but you can see that it is a lot less pronounced in this tool. The frame feels so much stronger, even though it's the exact same frame. It's just the matter of the, the amount of tension that they put on those handles that makes all the difference in the world. That being said, you should be able to do the same thing with the free P2, P4, just tighten them up a little bit. You lose that, that free opening movement, but you gain frame rigidity. And I think that's more important from my perspective. Again, I have never been a big advocate of the free series, but I am really starting to come around. And I think this tool set is really, really fantastic. Couple of little things that I think they can improve upon. Well, uh, we talked about the one on the all, definitely have to go with a pointed all 
uh, to get my vote. And they can always move that little screwdriver over into this tool. I think that would work out a lot better. Uh, even this micro driver, the micro driver can be integrated. They surely Leatherman has enough ingenuity to integrate this micro driver to be able to use it into the regular exchanger uh, in some way, shape, or form. I, I, I can't understand why they haven't done that. And by doing that, you could kind of mix and match tools from the original free series. Now, one tool that I didn't like out of the start, but a lot of people have told me over the years that they get a lot of use out of this, which gives you an extra screwdriver gives you this little ruler which is not really a ruler but more of a depth gauge and in that function i can see that working very well but more importantly one tool that you don't have or one function that you don't have in this tool is the wire stripping capability i think that this tool would work better in this frame as opposed to the little micro driver holder but that's obviously uh it's it's going to be Whatever your personal preference is, is what I'm getting at there. The next thing that they could do to improve this tool, you'll notice that on the knife blade, it uses the full length of the frame. Same is true of the saw blade, it uses the whole length of the frame. But when you come over here to the file, they left that quite a bit short of the end of the frame. So they could actually lengthen this up about 3 16 possibly a quarter of an inch, give you a much longer file by comparison. And one thing that I would like to see him add in here would be to put a chisel grind on the front of this file so that it was facing down like this so that you could actually use the front of that file as a scraping tool as well, give it a little added functionality. Uh, that is one way that they can improve this design. The last is the scissors. I always wish that they can make these a little longer. You'll notice that these have a lot of extra room there too. They could make more surge-esque scissors, if you will. Uh, and I think that it would very much benefit this particular multi-tool. But that being said, I am really grateful for the new changes. And I'm looking forward to seeing these in the upcoming Leatherman Arc. I hope that they intend on adding MagnaCut blade steel to a lot of their other models, especially with a thumb stud. Even if they make... Uh, this would work great in the charge if they only wanted to do this in their more premium models. Uh, I think that would be fantastic. And I like this new blade shape. I think it's very well done. It's extremely sharp. It's a very nice knife blade. The only thing that I get a lot of use out of that I'm not that's not on here is obviously that serrated blade because I do actually use that blade quite a bit. But as far as that, I think they chose the right long tool to eliminate from this tool set. Uh, it's just really well done. I'm, I'm, it's been a long time since I've been able to really truly say this and believe it. Leatherman has done a really fantastic job with this tool, and I'm very much looking forward to the Leatherman arc. My name is Ben. You've been watching the Texas Tool Crib. I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you in the next one.